Hello, welcome to the Retro Show. I'm Dirty Mike, and uh, if uh, in the other video I showed you how to load up software, but what happens if you don't have a disk drive and just have a PC? You get one of these little bad boys, and I'll show you how it works. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So I'm in. Um, actually, I don't know how to play this. So. Um, Okay, it's playing on its own. So, anyway, I was just saying earlier, so I still have my Atari 800XL. And one of the first purchases I made is a some kind of way to load up uh, images from my PC to this serial I.O. port. So, the software I use, and I got notes, it's called the SIO2 PC USB. A uh, guy from YouTube I bought it from is named, and I do I do apologize if I pronounce this correct incorrectly, Lothark, Lothark, uh, Lothark PL. I think it's the website. I'll put a link to the description below to his website and to his eBay page. Now, um, hang on a second. I'm going to show you the software I am using. Nope, that's not it. Window capture. Oh, there we go. So here's the software. As you can see, uh, I have the image loaded. So you saw a little picture, and I'll put a picture of the uh, of the software. And it's actually glowing green, uh, green right now. And I just load up an image. So the way it works is just say I want to turn this guy off. So I'm going to go and find myself m image. And it opened up another window, and I'm just gonna grab uh, any old image. So I had I had the A's. I'm gonna go to the B's this time. Let's go to I don't know backgammon. So as you can see, backgammon is there, and for whatever reason, some recognized fields and headers. That's not a big deal because I loaded Archon two with the same issue. I power the guy on and as you can see it's reading the discs and maybe I'll do a close-up of this little video I haven't decided yet on the editing part but I'll just whoop. oh there it goes and I'll take off the no that's not it and there it is backgammon it works quite well so what am I doing The computer. Oh, okay, it's just backgammon. <laughs> I don't want backgammon. What am I doing with backgammon? So let me see if I can load another image uh, while this thing is running. I don't think it'd be a problem. How about we get something that's more arcadey? Uh, here's Defender. Uh, uh, let's try Defender. All right. So, let's, so right now, Defender is loaded. Turn it off, turn it back on. Of course, uh, again, with my 800XL, I have to hold on the option to, because uh, a lot of the software uh, will like the cartridge there, the, the, uh, I guess the basic cartridge, and the option will skip it. Press game button, the start button. All right, let's go to. And it just works like if you had it. I'm not shooting my people. My peeps, whoa. I'm out of practice. So you can see. Yeah, it works fine. Um, I'm really, really happy. I think we're. Now this is oh okay this is with um, I think it cost me forty dollars with shipping and everything and I think it's I forget where the country from I think it's Poland PL I think it's Poland and um, it didn't take that long uh, I guess anybody watching from the states will take a lot less let's see if we can find anything else and there's actually in the software the software itself it's called the and I'll show you in a minute. Window capture there. So, OK. 
can I I can't see the top of this but it's called the ASPE QT Atari serial peripheral emulator for QT so whatever that means and I'm assuming I'm not going to pull out the port now but I'm assuming that uh, it only works on Atari computers now I'll put a picture of the other device that a lot of people recommend uh, I forget what it's called but it was more expensive by a lot like 20 to 30 dollars more and I find that the circuitry was like bare like you could see all the circuitry inside so this one is a nice little um, clear through package I like that and it's very small and it's better to like if I want to make more videos of the Atari I don't have to put this big humongous uh, uh, I guess uh, disk drive I like my disk drives don't get me wrong I'll remove that uh, window capture so let's try another file Ah, oh, hero! I love hero. Let's go. What? That was weird. Let's try that again. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P H H H H. Uh, let's try this version. Open. Has unsaved changes. Oh, okay. Whatever. It says it has unsaved changes, whatever that means. Alright. Option. Boop. Oh, there it goes. One of my favorite, favorite Atari games. I should get this for the 2600 one of these days. Yeah, it's perfect. this is going to be better software oh, there's something about Tori I'm glad they poured this over here there's some stuff that I was surprised that didn't get ported because some people mentioned the Bart's Tale it's never ported I don't see why now apparently I saw on the Bart's uh, there was somebody made a demo of the Bart's Tale and I saw a YouTube video of it I would like to try it, uh, to run it on my software since I got this little device. And, but whatever. Love this game. Um, also, another thing I would, if anybody would like in the comments, is there a way to take an image, like one of these image softwares that I have, let's just for instance Hero, and then throw it on a disc. If I find a single density disc, hard, oh, hard disc, not called this, floppy disc, and basically take a copy program, take that image, and then copy it onto the disk drive. I'm assuming it's something to do with the chain because it's, it's a daisy chain of software. And there must be a way to save that file. If anybody can show me or point me to like a YouTube video or something on how, oh, I suck, on how to do it, it'll be much appreciative. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, seriously, this is... This is one of the games... I have, like, the... Oh, they suck. I have the... Um, what was it? The, the, uh... The came out for PlayStation. The Anthology. I have the Atari Anthology. I only play this game. <laughs> Through the, I know I have Pitfall, and I, and that's one game that I'm missing from my my Atari collection. Anyway, getting back to sort of the review of this uh, of this piece of hardware. Um, if you have an 800 or any of the 8-bit models, it's really worth getting it, and not because it's easy to copy the games or load the games. It's, if you want your hardware to I guess last longer and mind you like my disk drives last no oh, they work perfectly and stuff and I guess if I had all the software I'm dead yeah I'm dead so if I had all the software for it it'd be fine but again I went on eBay and they're like 10 to 15 dollars each and 
ten dollars shipping. Now I understand why because it's probably going to be just a special container, and they probably have insurance on it, and it's not just making money. Maybe it is. I don't know. So I just want a way, I guess, to run it on. If I want to have a disk drive experience, so to speak, and have it like I have a little, and I'm sort of going on a, a tangent a little bit. But again, I think I mentioned one of the videos that somebody made me a desk. So I want that desk with all this Atari stuff to make it look like it's actually from the 80s, like you went back in time. Like the only part that is going to be brand new is my little cheapo RCA monitor that takes um, audio video cables and that's it and it works fine. I just want that, I don't know, I just maybe I'll take some pictures of my daughter. It'd be kind of cool and neat and all that. So I'm going to see about another image. One more image, one more image. Now if you have any, uh, I have a ton of them now, if you have any programs you want me to record, just let me know in the comments also. Indiana Jones, insects, I'm in the eyes, ooh, into the eagle's nest. Let's open this bad boy. I guess I'll make the changes, whatever that means. I'm so happy this works. I was, And it's so easy. Okay, how about this? Uh, start to finish, this is what I did, okay? So I plugged in and I had an extra, you get one of these little uh, USB cables, they're everywhere, they're printer cables. I found this in the trash. Like it's not hard to find and if you can't find them at a, at a garage sale or a, or a uh, thrift store or Value Village or I think it's called, I forget what it's called, Saves in the States or any Goodwill, these cables, they're everywhere. So, and then this thing, so I plugged it in Windows 7 automatically, oh sorry I have Windows 8, and Windows 7 and 8 should automatically install the drivers. Once you do that, I'll put a link in below to change the COM port because the, um, the hardware only detects between COM port 1 and COM port 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when I installed it, I was lucky, it actually set to COM port 4. So in the software itself, here, how about I show you, in the software itself, once all that's done, you run the software for the first time. So I'm going to go with Windows Capture, and I'll see about, can I enlarge this thing? Ooh, wow. All right. So, so here, can I run this? All right, options. Darn it, I can't even show it. All right. Um, so let me see here. So I'll open up another Windows Capture thing. And I do apologize about this. I'm not really planning this. Uh, Windows Capture, OK, and I want Cancel. I want to go Tools, Options, and it just crashed on me. <laughs> All right. Uh, take off that. OK. <laughs> All right, so trust me, the instructions, I'll put the instructions in the link below then. You go in the options, and I, I think it's under advanced, and then you go and change your COM port. And I actually have to rename it. There's no drop down menu. It said COM port 1, I changed it to COM 4, and it worked fine. So I'm going to run the software again. Run this bad boy. And then open image. I don't want into the eagle's nest. I think it was into the eagle's nest. Come on, into the eagle's nest, open, yes, all right, now, once that's loaded, I go to, let's turn on this bad boy, and the great thing about it is no moving parts, which is funny. Still got the little ticking noise, eh? Now, if I remember, I don't know if it was this game or the first Wolfenstein. Select mission. Oh, rescue the prisoner. No, it wasn't this game. No, it was the other one. So there was another game that I had for the Commodore was 
And so the Eagles, uh, not the Eagles Nest, but it was um, called Castle Wolfenstein. And <laughs> I think it was the disc was so corrupt, and I wanted to play it. So I popped it in and loaded it with the command. It was Commodore 64. No, I can't go that way. Oh, who's that? So it was a Commodore 64. All I saw was Hitler in the next room doing his whatever. Go in the next room and it usually crashes. <laughs> That's all I had. Where am I supposed to go? I have no keys. Alright, this is... This is all bugger. Bugger. Alright, anyway. Let's go and load up, I don't know. Uh, let's see, let's try Donkey Kong. Is Donkey Kong here? Ooh, Dig Dug. Oh wow, Dizzy Dice? What is that? Oh, Donkey Kong Jr. This is Donkey Kong, there we go. Yes. Turn this bad boy on. I shouldn't leave it on so long. Like hold on the button. Excuse me. Better than the original Atari version, that's for sure. Oh. Okay. Uh, the Coleco version is still better. Which is fine. That's cool. You see the barrel on the So that's pretty much for my videos. I would I recommend it definitely. If you have an old Atari, 400, 800, the XL series, later on series, even with a removable keyboard, this is a must own. I like it because a it's more compact, a little cheaper, works great out of the box. So if you like these kind of videos, please click on subscribe or give me some thumbs up. Until the next video, this is Bearded Mike signing off.